Good afternoon, everybody in Iceland. I'm Suraya Latif, and this is Odisa Guzula. We are at the University of Cape Town in South Africa, and we're coming to you to present on our paper, Emerging Academics Using WhatsApp to share novice and expert resources in a postgraduate writing group. We're going to just briefly start by introducing the topic and talk about the background and context, and then we would talk about the theoretical framework and then offer some conclusions. First of all, we want to thank Teresa and Mary Jane for including us in the book project and also thank them for including us in this panel and allowing us to participate. Um, regarding the background for the paper, we started a WhatsApp group in October 2014 and the group basically grew organically out of a real-time writing group called Shut Up and Write, which my supervisor and police supervisor, um, Carolyn McKinney, started on a Friday from 9 to 11. And basically, the when the academic year ended, we needed, a, we missed coming together every week, discussing ideas, um, writing regularly, and we decided to quite organically just one night while we were ch chatting on WhatsApp to start writing for 30 minutes and then taking a break and then chatting um, for 15 minutes. Um, basically we, the paper, the content of the paper and the theoretical framework really came from um, the background in which we were writing in it. As we were editing the paper, Feast Must Fall was happening and that's how we ended up including Fanon and Bow Hooks because it really spoke to the kind of challenges students were having with the institution, with the university. We thought about how um, we would include the postgraduate perspective and some of the challenges the postgraduates faced. These were, for example, working in isolation, um, coming to university and waiting outside the supervisor's office and then leaving the university. Also, postgraduate students from multilingual backgrounds were having to read and write academic English without any level of support um, based on the assumption that they were postgraduate students and that they therefore could speak and read and write academic English. We also had students who needed um, support with managing supervisor feedback and this was both in the way some supervisors worked in that they had long periods between um, returning work with revisions or when the work was returned with revisions that there were massive um, revisions. A lot of the revisions had to do with not the level of ideas but with the level of writing um, in English. And so some, these were some of the concerns we wanted to raise in the paper and that we spoke to. Um, um, the other aspect was the academic hierarchy. And basically, because we were all older students, we were coming from um, existing jobs and existing positions and now found ourselves to be um, in a position where we had to Im implement and interact in a very kind of, um, I wouldn't say subservient, in a very uh, tentative way with someone else who had assumed more knowledge than we had. Basically, um, the way this, uh, the process worked was that we created a WhatsApp group and we had two time bands uh, for writing. Some of us we found it easier to write in the evenings until um, early hours of the morning and others um, liked to write in the morning so they would wake up and at 5 o'clock or 4 o'clock <laughs> in the morning to write. So anyone uh, could issue an invitation to others to say I'm up and I'm, I'm going to be writing maybe for 45 minutes so you say how long you're going to be writing for and then the others will join and say I'm also writing count me in and and then we would put um, a clock to signal the time that we, now we are starting there were actually two clocks and the other one would be like okay now we're stopping uh, so we'll take a break and in the break would have um, 
uh, discussions in the break, sometimes just a personal talk about how we are, how we're doing, and then and it, and then the talk would lead to academic writing and, and, and the stuff that people were struggling with. Our theoretical framework that we chose, we started with um, a social cultural perspective and we did that because we are in literacy education so we recognize the importance of language in learning and in education and also the importance of social interaction in learning. And this is actually why we created the WhatsApp group, that we needed the social interaction, the discussion to bounce ideas off, um, ask questions in a very open and very, um, in a very open and supportive environment. Um, the other, um, the other aspect was the community of practice, right? Yeah. Uh, because um, um, you know those who have worked um, around the notion of community of practice realize that the, if a group of people comes together to sharpen their tools, whether they are doctors or or educators or even students like us who wanted to write, we wanted to sharpen our writing tools so that we are able to produce thesis that is um, up to standards and and that we understand the processes involved. So so in this community of practice that we were creating, we we were uh, going to we were coming to it from different levels of our PhD. Some were ahead, maybe in their third or fourth year, while others were at the beginning stages of the PhD. Though we were coming from different work backgrounds, uh, so it doesn't mean that if people were coming. Um, as first year students to the PhD, they didn't know anything about writing. So we'd made no assumptions about that. But, but it also helped to see those who were far, who could offer their ideas and help. It, it really worked well. So basically for the... Um, we used the notion, the New London Group's Pedagogy of Multiliteracies as a theoretical frame because we thought we found that it would actually cover all the aspects of the pedagogical process involved in the WhatsApp group, such as um, situated practice, overt instruction, critical framing, and um, transformative practice. And we actually felt that. Our work in creating a, a linguistic third space of the, of the WhatsApp group actually switched the whole process around because just the creation of a WhatsApp group was about um, critical framing and transformative practice that we were coming together as a group and challenging the whole idea of academia as this individualized um, trajectory where everybody just works on their own projects and produces individualized academic um, work. So and so, we were transforming it uh, through the WhatsApp group, and we're saying, okay, we we are we belong to an institution, but we can change the institution in a small way. And WhatsApp became that small way in which we transformed the university into a virtual um, third space where we were going to to do away with the way learning is organized at the university. Learning that involves just the supervised like individual writing, but also a meeting between the like one-on-one -on -one meeting between the supervisor and the student which sometimes turned sour for some of the students so we wanted to create um, a, a different working environment that helped us to work as a group so um, the WhatsApp group then became a virtual third space but also formed a community of writers that came together and so in working with the uh, so so we had both the critical and transformative uh, I think aspects of the framework and the other part of the critical um, perspective on the university was that the university is anglonormative so everybody is expected to to be able to speak English and a particular type of English and if they don't speak that kind of English they are either deviant or deficient so we wanted to challenge that and we wanted to also bring in um, our own um, knowledges and we wanted to bring in our own languages and our social cultural resources basically uh, to the learning space so uh, so the whatsapp group was serving those purposes of 
helping us to, to bring in what we know, which is part of um, also the New London groups, or, uh, you know, um, or, of um, situated practice. Because situated practice means teaching from people's lived experiences. And so we were bringing our lived experiences, uh, you know, into the WhatsApp group so we could bring in uh, our languages, the different languages that we spoke, uh, the different knowledges that we got from different workspaces that we're coming from, plus um, also because we're at different levels of the PhD, so we could bring what we know into this space. And then, um, then if people struggled with something and they struggled with a literature review or how to write a proposal or how to go about um, taking in the feedback from the supervisor, we applied what uh, is called overt instruction, which is an aspect of multiliteracy framework, which allows us to explain things, to describe things, you know, to explain the processes of how to write a literature review, to describe how a theory works, for example, with some of the things that came into, into effect. And th what this WhatsApp group demonstrated was that we were not all as experts at the same time, or not all novices at the same time. At certain positions, certain opportunities arose where you knew more than another student and you shared that information. We shared information about conferences. We actually started working together and produced the conference paper which we presented. Um, and there were four of us working on that conference paper. So we took um, the data set from the WhatsApp group and we we looked at it through three theoretical lenses. We looked at it through cultural historical um, theory. We looked at it through theories of the body and through literacy. And we looked at it through literacy, education, and translanguaging. And we presented this paper at a, at a education technology conference and at a student conference. So out of this whole WhatsApp process, other forms of writing grew and other knowledges grew and we um, learn to share information about our theoretical frameworks, about the way we worked and about new projects, new writing, new conferences coming um, into um, all information that we got on new ways to present writing. Yeah. So out of, uh, out of the work that we had been doing, for example, when, when students struggled with um, like writing um, a literature review uh, or taking in feedback from the supervisor, what the other group members did, they helped to mediate um, supervisor feedback. And sometimes it's so easy, I'm sure we all know, that it's difficult to get feedback, that it, it feels like critique of your work Although it should be, of course we know, it should be um, constructive criticism to help you move forward with your uh, writing project, but it's always because of the experiences we have, we have from schooling where we were told that um, everything that's wrong you know, is marked with red pen. So it, it, people were coming from different backgrounds and some had these experiences in the group. So it helped to have other group members to mediate supervisor feedback uh, by sometimes uh, showing that it happened to me or sharing that it also happened to me but I'm very happy look at where I am with my writing or sometimes people say no I just give it a, a little bit of time and then come back to it but by, by the time I come back to the feedback it actually doesn't feel mm -hmm. harsh um, it's just because as human beings we, it's, it's, it's a struggle to take a uh, critique from somebody else not that the supervisors were, were bad and at, at the time there was a lot, a lot of pressure on the PhD students to produce writing in a certain amount of time and produce writing in standard academic English and a lot of the revisions that were coming back were basically grammar, um, structural problems but nobody actually wanting to sit with students and talk through the problems or talk through how to in make improvements at that level. And so the WhatsApp group provided important support and encouragement, as Kalisa says, just to help you mediate and move from that position of powerlessness into this is something that I can actually manage and understand and improve on and to move the PhD or writing project forward. Mm. 
it actually uh, became like you could see when something uh, you know um, made sense to somebody they would say the following day oh thank you people um, actually took your feedback and it doesn't feel bad anymore and so that was how that kind of encouragement helped at both a, a, a emotional level as well as intellectual level so in conclusion <laughs> The WhatsApp group provided emotional support, academic support, um, provided an idea of how you can actually structure academic learning and writing in a more supportive, collaborative way. Um, it was transgressive in the sense that it bro broke the boundaries between not only students, um, from different areas in education, but also students from different parts of Africa coming together, actually um, collaborating, exchanging ideas, exchanging work, um, and actually becoming um, intellectual support for each other. Mm. And the translingual test space that got created there was that, you know, because you know, English was not uh, or is not a language that all of us um, speak at home. So it gets, it gets exhausting to be always interacting in English and writing in English. So people could write and uh, you know in their own languages, even if it's small things like greetings, for example. And in that process, learning took place too, because we were learning each other's mm -hmm. languages and, and we came from different countries. So we were learning and it, it became a positive space where people, none of us were shut down by somebody for not being able to speak their language or being told that you should operate in an agronormative way, just English. Um, so we could operate at different levels, even though um, most of the time the academic elements of our work, uh, of, our, our, of our interaction became more English and then the social elements were much more um, translingual, it did create that space where we felt like we, we were really, really um, um, connecting both academically and socially and emotionally. So what advice do you have for people starting out writing groups? Hmm. Well, this one was an organic, um, yeah, this, this, this um, WhatsApp group developed organically, but now next time I think if people were to meet, um, the students were to meet face to face uh, on campus, or even if they meet through a WhatsApp group, it would be important for, for, for people to meet and discuss uh, how they want to work in a group. Uh, because not everybody can work in a group and not everybody interacts through WhatsApp because uh, it's like with all social media. For some people, you know, they use it much more easily and other people still struggle to, to catch up uh, or, or, you know, with all the writing that has to happen there. So uh, I think a discussion would be helpful and um, also the distribution of work um, and the roles and the changing because some of the roles included um, if you were writing a paper together, some of the work included uh, somebody who's going to be the lead communicator, uh, you know, for, for, the, for the paper or for the journal. Um, it also included somebody who was going to put all ideas together. So if we all wrote one paper and put together, some, we needed somebody to put it together, those roles would need to be discussed and they would need to rotate so that all of us experience, uh, you know, all, all of the students working in a group experience um, growth in, in doing certain things um, around the, that involve the academic writing, basically. I would say for some groups it might be simpler to meet um, in person and for those students who are coming from other places in Africa and who are PhD students living off campus might not have a central space to, to work, to come together. So WhatsApp would be very um, useful creating an online group in that um, manner. Other students who need to come to the university for Wi-Fi to use computers I would suggest that set aside a time weekly or more than once a week to meet at the computer lab. So everybody works in, at the computer lab on uni at university using university Wi-Fi for maybe 45 to 90 minutes and then taking a 10 minute break and then coming back into the lab 
and working for another 90 minutes or for however long you would need to work. So there are many ways in which you can think um, creatively around using this idea of an online writing group. The advantage is you're working in a, in a virtual community but you're working on your own project and you're connecting, connected to people who you can ask questions or who can rely on information that you have. So there's a lot of information sharing around funding, around um, the length of, for example, PhD proposals, around theory or theoretical questions or ideas about pieces of data that they need assistance with ideas to interpret or ideas for structuring the PhD. So there are many way, creative ways if you just start thinking around how to structure your own online group or your own um, real-time writing group. There are many ways to go about it. Mm. And lastly, there is, I mean, what we often do uh, when mm -hmm. we meet for Shut Up and Write, <laughs> we, 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 uh, it happened by accident again. We meet uh, an hour before Shut Up and Write and we have, you know, our morning coffee. But we end up, what we end up doing is, and we, we, we end up do, we discussing what we are doing and, and, and giving each other advice on how to go about it. For example, I've just written a journal article uh, where um, I needed to speak about it and have somebody listen to me, uh, uh, you know, listen to my ideas about this journal article. And Surya was like, is always there to lend an ear to what I'm talking about. And with my phone again, taking notes on Google Keep, you know, um, also was, I found it much more helpful. So when I went to work on my computer after that meeting, I simply transferred the the, I simply transferred the, the notes that I was writing on Google Clip to my um, to my Google Docs and then I could open it there so there was no need for me to retype the whole conversation because you know I um, I wrote as we had the interaction. Yeah. So Tolly is very good with um, technology and she uses it very easily. The rest of us not so much. <laughs> so she always she has to give us tutorials. <laughs> But um, also using the WhatsApp group, then one of our um, members, D, actually did a video interview for our for for the conference presentation. So we had to all sign up for Dropbox and then learn how to actually work with the video, embed the video in the presentation, so that it ran smoothly and so that, so that it worked. So the WhatsApp group sort of only started other areas of expertise that we had to learn and that we had to carry on. Um, using Google Doodle, for example, um, was another way, another sort of form of technology that we learned. Um, and I think part of this was, part of the process was just getting people comfortable with using technology, thinking around how we could use technology to work um, with academically.